Ken, you look great. Ooh, thank you. I'm really digging this look. Ah, uh, you know, I'm always, it's it's old fashioned. Who are you wearing? Who, who are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> this is like, you know, fashion police. Ooh, uh, it's it's my new evergreen double win hat. Hey. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, this is the prop one. I'm waiting for my real one to come in. Right. Well, it's Can I coming. say that? It's Can coming. I say that on the- <laughs> yeah, it's coming. We're getting them for, coming. for, for the whole team. Staff. Yeah. And I'll rock it on every podcast episode until you tell me not to. I love it. Well, if you are also a big fan of the double win and mm-hmm. want to sport it, we do have this hat available right now in the store. However, it's hidden. So oh. if you just go to our store right now, you're not going to actually see it. What? Yeah. How do you get it? Well, first of all, you have to be on our email or SMS list right now to get early access to our Black Friday deals. Do it now. Okay. I'm not even going to tell you what they are because they're that good. They're going to be legit. I'm excited. They're very good. So if you're not on our email list or our SMS list, you need to be on one or the other to get access this week to all of our Black Friday deals. Don't worry. It's not like we're going to come out with some you know, killer thing later and you're going to miss out. These are the deals. So get it. These are the best deals you are going to have. But it's not public. This year. Yep. So the way to get the hat is to subscribe to the Full Focus Planner once you get in through your magic link. Mm. And then you'll get this hat for free, which is amazing. For free? Yes, for free. Otherwise, you can buy it for $30 if you are already are an annual subscriber to the Full nice. Focus Planner. So go get I on love our Black email Friday list. Deals. Get on our SMS. If you go to fullfocusplanner.com, there will be a pop-up that comes up uh, to get you on our email and SMS list. You'll also get a, a discount code there, uh, but you will be able to get access to the sale. When you said that, here was my initial thought. I go, okay, it's the end of the year. Obviously, maybe you're going to gift a subscription to the planner to somebody, but you can gift the subscription and somehow keep the hat for yourself. That's totally. the way to they, do it. They don't have to know. They never the have to, to know. Pro move. <laughs> so that's that's what I would do. If you've already got, if you're not renewing it the year for whatever reason, uh, you can you can still get that. We you also have our new variety bundle subscription. So you can Which get so many people have been asking. for. Everybody's been begging. Yes. I don't know. Begging. I didn't realize we never did it until now. Yeah, it was very complex, shockingly. Uh, but we finally got the ability within our store to do this. And we're super excited. People are loving it. And you can get whatever styles you want in your subscription, which is awesome. All right. So today we are talking about one of my favorite topics and one of my favorite parts of my morning ritual, which is journaling. Mm. But I hear, Ken, you have stopped journaling. This is my confession. Okay. Which is so interesting. I can't believe you used to and then you stopped. Oh, there's so many reasons. Yes, yes, yes. It happens. Yeah. I it do you, you want me to get into it right now or do we just going to get into it in the show? Yeah, let's get into it in the okay, show. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about the benefits of journaling for me. Yeah. The reluctant journaler. Let's, let's do go. it. Welcome to another episode of Focus on This, the most productive podcast on the internet so you can banish distractions, get the right stuff done, and finally start loving Mondays. I'm Ken Freire here with Marissa Hyatt. Happy, Happy Monday. Monday. <laughs> oh, we did it at the same time. We actually nailed that one. I know. We weren't even planning on that. No, that was great. but that was actually great. I love it. We're feeling the good Monday energy today. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah. I journaled this morning. Oh, God. Did you journal? Did I journal? No, definitely not. You definitely didn't. No. Okay. So first of all, before we jump into why I think you should, and I'm, I'm going to do my best today to convince you and all the other non journalers out there to pick up the habit of journaling. Uh, but I want to hear why you don't currently journal. Why I don't currently journal. Okay. So I used to journal a lot. Okay. When I was younger, I used to journal a lot. Uh, now the main reason why I don't journal probably two main reasons. Uh, I used to journal a lot for self-reflection, like yeah. self-awareness, and I think I've just developed the habit of self-awareness pretty well. Okay. Uh, well not so saying I'm an some expert. Some would say. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, oh, look at we'll, all your we'll blind spots. We'll check you on that. <laughs> uh, and then, I'm going to play a montage of just like statements from the last four episodes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we're already, we're only however many episodes in and we mm. can debunk that, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fact check that in last week's episode. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, I think the second one primarily is just time. 
You know, yeah. I, I feel like I got so much going on. I have four kids married and just like, yeah. just the, the speed at which my kids wake up and ramp up sure. <laughs> is insane. And sometimes uh, I prefer sleeping in than having to right. take an extra 15, 20 minutes to journal. Right. I think that's the other thing too, is that when I used to journal, it was like 30, 40 minutes and then almost an hour. I'm like, just start, I just start writing and writing. Yeah, and then, a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I don't, I don't got time for that yeah. right now. I uh, wouldn't have time for that. Yeah. So I would reflect later on in the evening or something like yeah. that. So that's probably the main reason. I still think journaling is really important. You know, it's, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, it's really good for you. Good for you. It's good for you. <laughs> yeah. But for me I'm right really, now. I'm really happy for you for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <Okay>. exactly. <laughs> uh, so today you're going to try to convince me to jump yeah. back into journaling. I'm, cu- I'm curious, though, Nick. Do you journal? Ooh, confessions. Uh, no, not consistently. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my mother... I'm going to talk about journaling. I like I like that deflection right there. You're like, but my mom. Well, no, I, <laughs> I just feel like maybe Marissa, I mean, as a former, not only does she journal and has journaled for years. I mean, she has just like uh, file cabinets full of, yes. of notebooks and other stuff. But now she takes journaling into art. Mm. And every day she's journaling in this like collage oh, yeah. thing. It's yeah. like so pretty. It's amazing actually it's it's pretty cool to see so uh i, I don't that. doubt its benefits period but okay. it's good for you <laughs> okay well i'm gonna do my best obviously i am the lone ranger over here by myself who journals consistently uh but hopefully i can convince yeah, you guys yeah okay and everybody else listening if you don't journal hopefully after listening to this you will decide that it's worth it to do it. Can you This is going to be fun. How how antagonistic should I get? Oh no, gosh. Just, <laughs> can you for the people who are maybe like me or other people who are like I'm not a journaler, right? That's a label we put on ourselves. Can you skip ahead to the end of this and give me at least a reason or like what am I going to get? Like you know what I'm saying like so I'm going to tune in for this. Like what am I looking out for? And then you'll you'll preview it for me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to. I want to ruin the show concept, but I'm going. How do I? I want to. I want a little bite. Well, I feel like there's a few key benefits here, and I'm just going to dive in because I think that this is going to. I don't know. Speak for itself. Once we get into what we're talking about, let's do it. I feel like the first benefit is self awareness. That mm-hmm. if you consistently every single day are reflecting on what's going on in your life what's going on in your head. I mean, I think this is a really overlooked aspect. People think like, oh, this is a, a journal. It's basically a diary. You know, it's just like a log of what's happening in your life. But what happens when you're journaling is that you're actually processing through all the thinking that's going on in your mind. And when you put pen to paper, there's a part of your brain that has to slow down to be able to like get what's in here out. And in that process, you actually are processing through what's going on, you're able to have more reflection on yourself, on your thoughts, on your mindset, on your circumstances, all of those things that if you were to, I mean, meditation is amazing and I'm a huge advocate for that as well, but you're not going to get that same pen to paper aspect. We talk about this a lot with a full focus planner, that it's really important to put your pen to paper. There's magic things that happen when you do this. And the same is true for journaling. And it's really, really important to do that. I know a lot of people will journal through an app or just on their phone, but you're you're missing something. It's the same thing as if you use a task management you know, system and you're just checking tasks off versus writing things out, planning, your brain is able to slow down and process through things. And I think that is really, really important. And you lose that if you're not journaling. You're not yeah. having any kind of part of your day where you're putting pen to paper and journaling and reflecting on what's going on in your life. So absolutely, everybody needs to be journaling because you need to have that sense of reflection and getting that pen to paper. Okay, Marissa, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. What would your father... The the inventor of of Toaster Strudel. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, what? You're just now telling me this? Oh, my God. She's like, I have to work? What Trotman quote does he love to use in this situation? Oh, gosh. This is a real trivia question. Um, this is for the lake house. Hang on. Uh, pencil tips. How does it go? 
First word is thoughts. But you're, this thoughts is the right. Thoughts disentangle themselves, passing over. How does it go? Hang you're on. very close. Passing over pencil tips. I can't remember. Uh, thoughts disentangle themselves. Something about the lips on pencil tips. Okay. Give, give it to me. Interestingly, I did not plan this ahead of time. Okay, this is actually on a, this, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> this is actually interesting. The quote that Michael Hyatt says is thoughts disentangle themselves passing over the lips and through pencil tips. Yes. But I don't think that's actually the quote. Okay. That's the a quote Michael is Hyatt actually quote. thoughts disentangle themselves over the lips and through the fingertips. Same idea. Okay. Fingertips so, or pencil tips. But that, the, 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 the idea stands, but he I mean he throws that quote out all the time. So I didn't know if He does. Yeah. That was a good trivia moment. Also, that would be a fun episode. Who said it? Michael Hyatt or some other productivity? <laughs> yeah, group? Actually, that would actually be hysterical. Yeah. So I, I think the the concept still stands that as you're writing things out, uh, your thoughts disentangle themselves. You're able to get clarity. You're able to kind of see patterns uh, in what your behavior is and what your thinking is and what your experiences are. So that is, to me, the first uh, reason that you should absolutely journal. I'm trying to decide if I'm convinced yet or not. I'm like, if I was a one out of 10 on journaling, I may have moved to a three out of 10. Wow. This is a tough crown. Okay. <laughs> I think the other thing is that it helps you have perspective. Oh, tell me more. Okay. So this is something that, again, is difficult to get uh, in other ways. I mean, you certainly can. And one of the best ways to get perspective, I think, is through other people. They can help you gain perspective. But one of the easiest ways is through journaling because you can go back and see how far you've come. Mm. And so this is like, I don't do this very often, but on occasion, I'll go back to, um, you know, an old journal or Often I'll go back, uh, our journals, the full focus journal is quarterly, just like our planners are. So it's three months. And so I love when I'm getting close to the end of that journal to go back to the beginning of the, the journal to see like, where was I three months ago? Mm. What was my thinking at that point? What decisions was I making that I'm now realizing? And it's pretty fascinating to see like the, the process, the, um, I don't know, progression that you've gone through in a short amount of time. And without journaling, I mean, maybe you some kind of you get a little bit of this through like photos or social media posts or something. But with journaling, you get like your internal dialogue out on paper and you can see the progression of that over time. Mm. You know, I, I, as you're saying that, I do remember how valuable that was for me yeah. when I was able to look at stuff. And I was like, oh, man, I remember when I was dealing with X. Yeah. And now it's it's gone or now I've I've overcome this or whatever it was. Or um, when you're in the moment and you're going, gosh, this this experience that I'm going through is so hard. Yeah. Like you're journaling. I don't know how I'm ever going to make it through this. And, you know, I don't know if I have it in me. You can flip back and then go, oh, look at that experience that I went through three months ago or whenever it was. And look, I was able to come through it. Yeah. I, I didn't stay stuck in that experience. And so you're able to gain that perspective so that now in the present moment, in that present experience, you can go, look, I can use my past experiences. I can draw on those to push me forward into the future and to give me the confidence and the encouragement that I need to move forward. Mm, I love it. I, I also think about this when it comes to product development, right? Uh, especially right now as, as in full focus, I'm creating a new product for us. Yeah. Right. I'm, as you were talking about it, I was thinking about all the iterations I've made on the product. And I was like, man, when's the last time I looked back on it? Right. So now this is a little homework assignment I'm going to do is just like from draft one, when I created the double win collective to what it is today yeah. and what we're doing, just like, oh man, look how many changes have happened yeah. for the better, right? Because we've been processing it. We've been beta testing it. We've been talking to people about it, uh, getting input, but I would lose all that if I didn't have any of that recorded anywhere. Totally. Yeah. Mm. And you would have you might more, be winning my heart again. And you would have a lot more of it if you would have been journaling. And my encouragement is start journaling because in six months, that product is going to be really different. 
And you're going to, you yourself are going to grow so much in that process. And how cool would it be six months from now to go back and be like, oh my gosh, look in November, this is where I was. This is where the product was. This is how we were, you know, the challenges that I was facing and all the things and look how far we've come. Yeah. Biggest challenge, Marissa Hyatt. (laughs) Okay. Well, (laughs) let's take it easy. This, this makes me think my grad advisor used to always tell me this, this quote, a way of seeing is also a way of not seeing. Right. Ooh. Every time that you, if I'm just in my head and I'm thinking about an idea, um, I'm only seeing this idea in one way. And there's countless other ways that I cannot see it anymore. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. I've zoomed in on this one point. So the idea of journaling and reflection would be just to like look at, you know, to sit there and go, well, to have the opportunity to list out or think a bit larger about what am I not seeing right now because I'm only living in this traumatic moment or difficult moment or whatever. Cause it's hard to see other stuff when you're in it for the record. I'm pro journaling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm I'm pro journaling. It's good for for you. (laughs) (laughs) No. Okay. Okay. But uh, in all sincerity, Marissa, I think I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, yes, this is actually wanting me to go journal. I was like, Oh, but now I gotta go find a journal unless I use a full focus journal. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, you should. Pen, <laughs> right. Um, but I think my biggest obstacle is time. Yeah. You know, where it's like, oh man, I'm trying to do all these other things. I don't know if I have the time to go do it. Yes. I think this is so common. I mean, this was true for yeah. me before I started journaling. And frankly, the only reason I did start and I've been consistent now for almost Two four weeks. almost four years, I've been consistent with this, yeah. which is crazy. I started that's pretty awesome. In uh maybe three years. I've started in twenty twenty ish, uh, is because in the full focus journal, it's going to sound like an ad and it kind of is, but (laughs) shameless plug, here we go. Shameless plug, but it is only our journal for each day. You only get two pages. So unlike if you were to just go buy a blank journal at, you know, Barnes and Noble or wherever, and you could, first of all, it's kind of overwhelming because it's blank and you're like, where do I start? What do I you know, what thought do I start with? What experience? Like, where do I even go from here? And as an internal process, I'm an internal processor. Yeah. That's where I go into like the deep depths of introverted rabbit hole. And I'm like, yeah, I will never come out. And I'm like, I got to. So start. for some people, they don't even know where yeah. to start. And they're terrified for others like you. It's like there's just you could go a mile. You know what I mean? It's too much. And in the full focus journal, Two of the features that I love is number one, it's only two pages per day. So it's, and it's a small, it's smaller than your uh, full focus planner. So it's not even that, that big, but it maybe takes you 15 minutes to get through at most, at most. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's fast. Like you can get through it fast. There's some days where if I'm just like in a hurry, I'm 10 minutes in and out. The other thing is that they, we ask, uh, eight questions every single day, seven of which are always the same. And then there's always like a bonus eighth question that changes on each page. But that way, if you're struggling with the blank page and you don't know where to go, you can look at our prompts and get going immediately. Hmm. So please hold. I'm going to go grab my journal, which is in my notebook, in my backpack. Are you going to read an entry from it? But I will, I will, this is not story time with Marissa, but I will read the um, questions so you can hear what they are. Cause I think they're super, super helpful and uh, might encourage somebody to start journaling. Yeah. So the first is super easy. What's been happening? What's been happening? What's going on? A lot. What are some recent wins? How are you feeling? What are you grateful for? What are you learning? What decisions have you made? What can you do to advance your goals? Is anything holding you back? So those are the seven questions that are on every single page of our journal. And I just love that because if you're ever stuck and you're not sure what to say or where to start going, you can always refer back to one, all of those questions, however you want to do it. Personally, I rarely use these questions. So I just journal off the top of my head, what's going on, what I'm thinking about, what I'm feeling. That's what I go to. But for a lot of people, I know they use those questions religiously. Then <laughs> you're not going to look. I'm not going to show an entry. I'm just, I, I want to show okay. people. Then we have the bonus question. Okay. So we have uh, on this page, it has uh, what has been a recent source of pain or irritation? Ooh, that's deep. Okay. Think of someone important in your life. You How would you feel? Ken down there? Yeah, yeah. All of them say Ken. <laughs> How would you feel without them? Yeah. 
Uh, let me just see. <laughs> How would you feel without Ken in your life? Peace. Um, what was the last time you made someone smile? Sure. What was it like? Okay, so there's all kinds of different questions. So I love our journal because it just makes it really, um, I don't know, foolproof. Like you don't have to be a, quote, journaler to be a journaler in our So those are world. just questions on the side. So if you open, yeah. can you open it up to a blank yeah. page? I'm not trying to read your, your all right. So if, if you're watching the video, right, you can check it out. These are just questions for prompts, right? But then there's two blank pages. Two blank pages. And you can just journal whatever you want, you know, which is fantastic. So A, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. And B, you don't have to feel like you need to like think through what you have to write before you write it. You can just grab your pen and look at these questions and start going. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I may grab I may grab a plan I may grab a journal and start journaling. You should. Okay, a couple other things that I really like about journaling okay. that I, and these are going to be specific to our journal because that's what I use and that's what we're here to talk about. Tell me, tell me more. Um, so we have two features that I love. First of all, we have a personal check-in, uh, which- She did what? <laughs> it's called a personal check-in. You'll do this at the beginning of every quarter and it goes through several questions um, and it's, again, so helpful for reflection for where you currently are in your life. So some of the questions are like, what stories are you telling yourself and are they true? Oh, such a good question. What in your current thinking is or isn't helping you? Then we ask you questions about the future. What do you hope for in this season? Beyond work, like beyond yeah. just your work life, what do you hope for in this season? So if you're, it kind of if gets you're thinking your, about the life score, if you've ever taken a life score assessment, you sh- and if you haven't, you should. Yeah. But we talk about nine life domains, so the other eight, Besides work yes. would be there. So that's what we're talking about. Absolutely. In that, yeah. That section. So we're asking you what makes you feel energized? What brings you purpose? Is there anything you're procrastinating that you need to get going on? Uh, what are some words you want to live by for the next 90 days? And then it goes into your goals. And so this is something that I do every single morning as I turn back to the goal page and I look at my goals. And so we talk about this a lot on the podcast is the importance of goal visibility. That if yeah. your goals, like, I think this is a big uh, party foul <laughs> that people do with their goals is they write them out and they have all these great intentions and then they're just shoved away in the corner yeah. and they're not looking at them. And so you can obviously look at them in your planner every day, but it's great to start your day. If you're a morning journaler, like I am that you start with your goals. And I love that. So that's kind of two of the features that I love. And then every, every month we have a check-in as well that ask some other great questions. So it's really guided. It's not just like a blank journal that I think a lot of people are used to that feels intimidating, overwhelming, and just frankly, not valuable. Like I wouldn't want to just go grab a random journal off, you know, Barnes and Noble and just try to go like, no, I'm not trying to write a book. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no. And and that's where I would say, this is, uh, most people don't know this about my, about me, but I come across very optimistic and I am but I have melancholy tendencies. Mm. So because of that, I can get very like just introspective introspective. Yeah. And I'm mm. like, people are like, Whoa, what were you thinking about? Like I am, I'm, I'm very rare. You know how sometimes they talk about guys that are like, they're thinking about nothing. I'm like, I'm always thinking about something. Yeah. And like, I'm like 10 layers deep. I'm in I like inception. Is, I think this so is that's a really where journaling good, can be like, yeah. dude, I got so much to write. I don't even know where to start. Well, I think this is really a, actually a good and important point to make is that often we can get to a place where we're ruminating, yep. where whatever it is that we're experiencing in life, let's just say it's a negative experience. Um, we can get so in our head about it and we just are playing that experience over and over and over. I was on the way in this morning having a voice conversation over text with two of my best girlfriends we're all single. We always share our, you know, ups and downs and all the things about our dating life. And so this morning we were having a whole like debriefing session. One of the girls had a big date yesterday and she was kind of having a vulnerability hangover this morning. And so we were having this whole conversation about it. Um, and we were realizing how helpful it is to process what we're thinking. And she's a journaler like me. And so she was journaling about it. And that's when she started uh, reaching out to us and talking about it. But it, if you don't have an outlet for those thoughts, like another person, which for a lot of people, they're verbal processors, and that's really helpful. I'm a verbal processor for sure. But for some, they need to be able to write it out. And and there's benefits to both. It's not like you have to just be one, one or, or the other. other. You can have both, and there's benefits to each. You're probably going to 
talk to your friends or your spouse in a way um, and about things that you're not necessarily going to journal. You're more going to have that introspective, you know, approach when you're journaling and, um, and then use those people to help you see kind of blind spots and, and that kind of thing. So absolutely. Uh, I think it's helpful for not ruminating. Okay. So as we wrap up our time here, I think you might've sold me. I'm going to go grab a planner or not a planner, sorry, a journal, a full focus journal, and I'm going to try it. Okay. At some quarter in some oh, okay. point in life. Non-committal. <laughs> Non-committal. I haven't made a smarter go out of it yet. Well, I would actually like to ask if Ooh. you are okay. listening and you're a journaler like I am, I would love for you to go in our full focus planner community and share why you love journaling. And tag, I think, and tag me on it so that I can get more convinced of yeah, it. Yeah, because I think that this is like an under uh, talked about topic. And I think that the journalers, it is time that we speak up. <laughs> so let your voice be heard and go to the planner community and share why you love it. I, I'm going to ask a very, you may need to cut this up, Nick. I don't know. But I'm going to ask a, a question that this might be more generalization. Is, is there a male or female issue when it comes to journaling? Like, is it more like, is there a tendency for women to journal more and men not to journal more? Hmm. I don't know if I've ever thought about it that way. Like, I'm just, I'm processing right now as we're talking about it. Like you talked about your girlfriends and I'm like, oh yeah, I know a lot of girls who journal. Can I say say something? Yeah. yeah. I think that journaling has historically been gendered because of the way that men aren't encouraged to feel. Yeah, yes. like and to think through that. So there isn't a plate. Why would a man journal? He's not supposed to think about any of these things <laughs> like right. that. Oh, I, we're going I deep now. We're going. We're going inception deep now. Okay, keep going. <laughs> no, but so I think that's really part of it. Even if it's not, you know, the journals aren't marketed towards women necessarily. I'm sure there some are, but yeah, they're just they just exist. But I I, I firmly believe that. Uh, I can't think of an influencer, a male influencer, who talks about journaling. Blake talked a lot about journaling. Blake yeah. Blake loves journaling. I mean, I think it's worth yeah. saying my dad created this. Yeah. He's a man. <laughs> it's true. And I think that a, a big reason that he took up the habit of journaling, and I, I can't remember how many, it's been like, I want to say a decade now, that he has consistently journaled every morning. And the reason was for primarily self-reflection and growth. Those were kind of like the two primary things that he decided that he needed to do. He's an Enneagram three for those of you who are Enneagram nerd. And as we know about Enneagram threes, they have a tendency to be really disconnected from their emotions. So he really struggled to get in touch with how am I actually feeling? How am I doing today? Because he's so go, 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 action-oriented, achievement-oriented that he didn't really have any kind of practice in his life that forced him to slow down and go, how am I really? And so one of the things, that's why there's a a question that says, like, how are you feeling today? These are questions. These are the eight questions that my dad uses, or seven questions, I should say, that my dad uses every single day. And that's why those are what is chosen in there. And what he often does, I don't know if he does this still to this day, he did at one point, he would go and pull up the feelings wheel. Do you know about the feelings wheel? No. Tell me okay, more. Guys, if you <laughs> go Google, I think it's just feelings. Let me look at this up. Feelings. Oh, wheel. I thought this was like a product that we developed. I was like, no. Feelingswheel.com. Okay, yeah. okay. You can go right now. It's free. And it's a feelings wheel. And you start at the center and you decide like, how am I feeling? Which one of these emotions am I feeling? And then you work your way out and it helps you expand your vocabulary for feelings. Because often we only think about these kind of typical ones. I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm mad. I'm glad. I feel like I'm in a children's (laughs) book. (laughs) You know what I mean? Well, And I I think men are are for sure like that. They're like, I'm happy, angry, or sad. Those are like the three primary emotions for men. And so like, okay, okay. you look at happy on the feelings wheel. Are you feeling playful, content, interested, proud, so on and so forth. And then go out from there and get even deeper into what the emotion is that you're feeling. This is great. I'm loving it. I love this. Yeah. Um, This is, I'm going to check this out. I mean, I have vocabulary for this, but this is in depth. It's really, really helpful. I'm looking at my 14 year old and I've, I'm like going, this feels very powerful. Yeah. Print it out. Put it on your fridge. Yeah, for sure. I, 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 this is great for, for anyone really for any gender. Right. Yeah. But I think Nick, you, you are spot on that. Like for men for a long time, they were not able to talk about their emotions. Right. Yeah. So uh, 
All this to say, y'all need to listen to me as the woman in the room. <laughs> sure. Okay. Because <laughs> we yeah. know a thing or two about this. Can I ask a, uh, a very sincere question about how to journal? We are. Do you feel like that there is value if somebody were to spend uh, deliberate 20 minutes a day, let's say they're walking, let's say they're whatever, and they just like speak their thing, right? So every day, they're not writing it down because of whatever reason, but they go like every day I record, you know, I just have the audio. audio Maybe I don't even record it. but You're you're driving and you're just speaking out affirmations to yourself or something like that. Not not affirmations. You're just like how you're checking out. How am I doing? Mm -hmm. How do I feel today? You know, some similar space. Do you think that the va- do you think there's value to that? Do you think there'd be better to write it down? I mean, where are you with that kind of idea? I mean, I like I said, I'm a verbal processor. Like that is probably my normal hunch. So I think yes, there's absolute benefit in that. Whether that's a recording with yourself that you're just kind of speaking this the things out. I mean, I think part of that feels a little overwhelming and awkward at the same time, you know, of like, okay, I've got to just sit here and talk to myself about how I'm doing. Oh, it's not, it's not awkward at all. That's okay. me Good all the time. time. Okay. Well, <laughs> or <laughs> you could, did we just become best friends? Did we just, <laughs> you could also phone a friend, you know, and, and essentially have that same kind of conversation. Obviously it's going to look a little bit different. Absolutely. There's benefit to that. I mean, I, I, I think that if that works and you feel like you can be consistent in that, great. I, I, I will say the downside is that that would probably, in my mind, when I think about that, takes more time to listen to those audio notes and save yeah. it. Like, I think you'd have to weigh, you'd have to have a way to like tag it in some way so that you could refer back to it. There's more like complexities, I think, with that that feel unnecessary. My thing is just journal and then call a friend if you want to call a friend. Yeah, that's what I would say. But yeah, I, do what works. I mean, by all means. Yeah, and I, and it, whether it's our journal or somebody else's journal or just a notebook. No, our journal. Like I, I will say, <laughs> I don't think that there is the perfect journal out there personally. I love our journal and I use it every day and it's one of my favorite products of ours. But uh, if you've tried it and you don't like it and something else works better for you, like by all means go. The point isn't about what you're doing, what you're using. It's more about the consistency of the yeah. practice. I think my biggest takeaway from this conversation is I'm going to go try to journal. I'll figure out when. Yeah. But um, I think something that you said that I really appreciated about our, our full focus journal is that like, it doesn't have to be 40 minutes. Right. Do 10 minutes. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I could carve out 10 minutes to just write down some of my quick thoughts. Yep. You know? And as I'm doing it, go about my day and move forward and decide if I'm going to build a continual habit on this. Yeah. Well, we need to do a challenge where you do like a 30-day journaling challenge. Mm. We'll see After you do my challenge for you. Yeah, we yeah. we got to start yeah. these challenges. Okay. Stay tuned. Stay but. tuned. All right. Thanks for joining us on Focus on This. This is the most productive podcast on the internet. So please go ahead and share it with your friends and be sure to join us in the Full Focus Planner community. And if you are a journaler, go in there and tell Ken why he should start journaling. And we'll be here next week with another great episode all about gratitude. Now I could talk about gratitude. Journaling with, no, but gratitude, let's do it. Okay. All right. Well, until then, stay stay focused. focused.